tensions have escalated from a simmer to a boil. In the past few hours, New York Times reported President Trump approved military strikes on a number of Iranian targets, what's called a measured response after an American drone was shot down. Planes were in the air, ships in position, when suddenly, according to the Times, the order came to stand down. It's not clear why President Trump changed his mind on the operation or if this was a logistical decision. It's also not clear if the strikes might still go forward. Meanwhile, the U.S. has provided coordinates, which it says proves the drone was over international waters when it was shot down. But Tehran says the surveillance plane violated Iranian airspace. And the U.S. Federal Aviation Authority has put restrictions on U.S. airlines flying over the Gulf region. They say commercial flights are prohibited until further notice because of the tensions and the risks with Iran. Military leaders in Iran are disputing the U.S. story at every point along the timeline. Our senior international correspondent, Fred Pleiken, reports now from Tehran. Despite President Trump's claims that the Iranians may have shot down the U.S. drone by accident or because of a rogue commander, the Iranians are saying that this was done absolutely deliberately. The Iranians are saying that they believe that the drone uh, violated their airspace and that's why they fired their surface-to-air missiles. Now, the Iranians even uh, released a video of those missiles being fired. And if you uh, listen to the voices uh, on that video, it certainly doesn't seem as though those are people who believe that they've just shot down the wrong unmanned aerial vehicle. Now, Iran's foreign minister also getting involved in this as well. He tweeted out almost a play-by-play -play of the flight of that drone until it was shot down. He says it took off um, from an air base in the United Arab Emirates shortly after midnight, and he said that it was... Uh, flying in stealth mode, which seems to indicate that he believes that it may have turned its transponder off or made uh, in some other way, shape or form, have been masking its identification. He says that it then entered uh, into Iranian airspace and was shot down. Jawad Zarif even giving coordinates of where uh, the drone was shot down. Uh, we looked those coordinates up. That would put it about nine miles off the coast of Iran, which indeed would be within Iranian territorial waters or Iranian airspace. Of course, the U.S released its own coordinates of where the drone was shot down and the Americans unequivocally saying that this was in international airspace uh, and not within Iranian territorial airspace. Nevertheless, the Iranians are saying the shooting down of the drone was a clear message to the United States that Iran's airspace is a red line. The unit that did this is the Revolutionary Guard Corps, which is the most elite unit of Iran's military, the head of the Revolutionary Guard Corps coming out and saying Iran does not want a war with the United States, but also that Iran is very much prepared in case a war happens. Fred Pleiken, CNN, Tehran. Samantha Vinograd is a CNN national security analyst and former advisor to the U.S. National Security Council. She is with us this hour from Los Angeles. Sam, good to see you. Hi. Hey, we don't know for certain, but you know, it seems possible that the U.S. president blinked bigly. Uh, here's part of that report from the New York Times. The operation was underway in its early stages when it was called off. A senior administration official said the planes were in the air, the ships were in position, but no missiles had been fired when word came to stand down. So from what we know about this, how will this be seen not just by you know, the leaders in Tehran, but the leaders in North Korea, the leaders in Russia, the leaders in Venezuela? You know, this list goes on. Well, to an extent, this will be seen as all bark and no bite. President Trump has escalated tensions to this point in response to myriad Iranian misbehaviors. But at this point, John, this is kind of a worst case scenario. The president is showing that he ostensibly made a decision, had a National Security Council meeting, and wasn't willing to follow through, which is really par for the course when we look at his posture on North Korea, for example. We were fire and fury until we weren't. And at this juncture, this is all already going to play right into the Iranian regime's hands. They will now be able to say that the United States is planning to attack them and that any further actions that they take are purely defensive in nature. They've been playing the victim card for several months now, several years even, and they now have even more uh, fuel to say that the United States is coming after them and they have to respond. Having been part of these kinds of conversations in the Situation Room before, I also really wonder what kind of message this is sending to our closest allies. Ostensibly, the U.S. military would have briefed some of its counterparts, if not all, before the planes took off and the ships were put into position, only to then have to call them back and say, the president changed his mind. He flip-flopped. So all in all, this shows gross disorganization and a president who can't seem to make up his mind even on something as important as a military strike on Iran. Here's a little more from the New York Times. Um, 
the report, it was not clear whether Mr. Trump simply changed his mind on the strikes or whether the administration altered course because of logistics or strategy. It was also not clear whether the attacks might still go forward. In your experience, having you know, been in the National Security Council, and just from what you know about past US military strikes, has anything like this happened before that they were like minutes away from you know, firing the missiles you know, and the president says no? This sounds like a really bad action thriller, John. And in my experience, when the military does, develops con ops or the plans for a strike like this, they are finely tuned, they are fully ready to go. And if the planes really had taken off, if we were really 90 minutes away from a strike, I don't see how logistics would have been what really messed this up. The military had pre-positioned assets. It is unlikely to me that a logistical failure would have been what pulled this operation back. It sounds more likely that the president changed his mind or somebody convinced him that this was not the right strategy. And I don't disagree on that. Mm -hmm. Launching military strikes against Iran would have been met at a minimum with a strong counter response from Iranian proxies and potentially Iranian forces from within uh, the, the country itself. Let's not forget the Houthis in Yemen, Iranian proxies all throughout the region, and really Americans that are in the region as well that could have been vulnerable to counterattack in places like Iraq and elsewhere. And so it would have been a misguided strategy to, to proceed with the strike. Not to mention, John, I'm very unclear on what the legal basis for these strikes were, there were, would have been. There's no congressional authorization to launch a military strike in Iran. And so for all those reasons, if the reporting is accurate, I'm very glad that the president changed his mind or pulled this back for whatever reason. Uh, you know, from my understanding, Pompeo went to Congress and basically said they want to use the you know, uh, authorization of military force in the days after 9-11, uh, which is questionable which from a, a legal point tenuous, of view. Which would be a very yeah. tenuous legal argument at best. I mean, the AUMF, the authorization for the use of military force, has really been grossly expanded to fit a range of... Yeah military operations using the existing AUMF to launch military strikes against targets in Iran would have been a very difficult argument to make. Very. Um, and, you know, to the point that of, the, of maybe the, the president changing his mind or having a change of heart, whatever. You know, on, on Thursday, there was a very different tone coming from the president when he was talking about the, the, you know, the drone being shot down. It was less bellicose. It was more conciliatory. And CNN also reporting that the president has been at odds uh, with his advisor, especially the very hawkish John Bolton. He was asked about that on Thursday. Here it is. Do you feel like there are members of your administration who are trying to push you into conflict? No, not at all. Not at all. In fact, in many cases, it's the opposite. But I will say, look, I said I want to get out of these endless wars. I campaigned on that. Yeah, is it possible that you know, Trump has worked out it's one thing to talk tough, to send out mean tweets, but making good on those hyperbolic warnings and all those threats? That's really hard. It is hard, and I'm going to come back to the point that President Trump is, thank goodness in this case, more bark than bite. I mean, I was part of a series of conversations under President Obama about going to war in Syria and uh, putting more troops in harm's way. It is a difficult decision for any commander in chief. And it is typical that various members of the cabinet have different views. The military, the State Department, the National Security Advisor, the intelligence community informs those decisions, and very often, Members of the cabinet with different equities have different recommendations for the president. So it's not unusual for there to be a difference of opinions. The issue here is what and whom is coordinating the fulsome strategy on Iran, not just deterring them from further strikes on American assets, but looking at the whole scope of things that Iran is doing and figuring out what tools are going to be most impactful. For whatever reason, if there was a focus on a military strike hours after President Trump said this, that this drone had been shot down by, by mistake, how did that fit into the larger strategy? And it, it really appears that nobody is steering the ship. It appears that the administration is shooting from the hip and playing a game of whack-a-mole when it comes to Iranian threats, rather than, again, looking at this macro picture and figuring out what to do. Yeah, uh, the other side of the, the, this story is that the FAA has ordered U.S. carriers to avoid the Persian Gulf and the Gulf Thank of goodness. Oman. Yes. Um, they cited the risk of the U.S. drone being shot down, the increased risk. But that order, um, the timing here is, you know, seems interesting. It, it, it seems, at least to one of our military analysts, that that order was made uh, in anticipation of a U.S. military action, this military action which was abruptly cancelled by the president. Would you agree? Uh, I don't know about that. I think that um, we've seen various um, insurance agencies, maritime agencies, businesses changing their posture in the Strait of Hormuz because there have been a series of tanker attacks over the past few weeks. And so 
I don't know uh, that it was necessarily um, in response to an impending military strike. I think that any government agency, any private company that's looking at the strait right now is probably figuring out that it's not a very safe place to be. Uh, so I don't know that there was a direct link with any impending military strike. It seems more like common sense to yeah. me at this point. Um, and I think we have to wait and see whether um, private companies start to really pull back transiting the strait, not, not just oil tankers, but we know how much other commerce uh, traverses those waterways every day.